here to the little stream that I was telling you about with the tiny little waterfalls. I've got my tripod back after a total tripod fail, which it's repaired and I'm happy to see how it's going to work. Okay everybody, so I've decided to use the uh, 70 to 300 lens um, because these are small waterfalls and, um, you know, because they're not this big, epic, um, tall waterfall, it's kind of nice to be able to zoom in and just focus on the parts of the waterfall that are the most interesting. And there are a lot of little lot of elements in these waterfalls because of the ice. That's one reason why I think photographing waterfalls in the winter is really cool and fun. So, as I said, I've got the 70 to 300 on there and I'm zooming in. Um, I'll show you the back of the screen in a minute, but first I wanted to talk a little bit about filters. Typically when you're photographing water, you wanna use a polarizing filter because this helps reduce the glare on the water so that any sun glare that's on the water will get cut by the polarizing filter, just like polarizing sunglasses. And then um, you'll be able to um, see into the water a little bit better. You can see the rocks under the water. In order to attach it to the end of my lens, I need to use a step down ring. I'm not a huge fan of these circular um, filters because you have to get these adaptive step down rings for every lens that you have that's a different thread size. Um, and that's kind of a pain if you're switching lenses between shoots. The other thing that you should make sure you do when you're working on a tripod is to make sure you um, turn off your vibration reduction or optical stabilization if you have it. The other thing I like to do is once I've got my um, focus in, I switch it to, to manual focus so it doesn't focus creep while I'm taking the photo. Remember when you're shooting waterfalls is that it's nice to get that uh, motion of the water and so you want to slow the, the shutter speed down enough in order to capture that uh, that motion. You don't have to, some people like to freeze the motion, um, but I like to get that creamier look. So right now, in order to get a proper exposure, I would be using, using a shutter speed of about one third of a second. Um, and I, I'd like it to be more like three seconds. So I'm gonna add a neutral density filter. This is a uh, three stop ND filter. And as you can see, it's, it's dark, you know, it blocks the light. So basically by putting this on the end of my polarizing filter, um, both gonna be reducing the glare on the water as well as cutting down the light just enough so that I can slow down the shutter speed to where I want it to be. My other settings are at ISO 100 and I'm at an aperture of um, f16. So you can see the back of my camera now. Um, this is the scene that I'm taking and again I'm using the longer lens, the telephoto lens, rather than the normal wide-angle lens that you would typically use for landscape photography because these waterfalls are pretty small. So I'm just trying to zoom in on a couple of these rocks here in the foreground and then on those waterfalls there in the background. 
so you can see that here. And so I have here an ISO of 100, I'm at F16, and the exposure here is at two seconds. And you'll see I've got my histogram pulled up here, and I like to do that um, because that helps me make sure that my exposure is, is on par. Now it's a little to the left. If you don't know about histograms, I can do another tutorial on that, but basically it's showing you your exposure. So you're going from the shadows or the darks all the way up to the other end of the histogram, which is the highlights. When you're photographing snow or, or waterfalls, um, typically you wanna shoot a little underexposed so that you don't blow out the highlights that can be um, caught in the snow and in the in the water. So we can go ahead and, and take that shot and then we can check our, our histogram again and we can see that both the luminosity and the RGB histograms are looking great. Okay, so this is why I don't like the circular filters. As you saw me do before, I put this uh, step-down ring adapter on my circular polarizer and because it's a circular polarizer, the glass spins around the glass, which makes it very difficult to unscrew from the zip-down ring. So in order to do that, you have to use these somewhat flimsy filter wrenches, um, but I find them to be pretty clumsy. They do work, but they drive me a little crazy. Because I couldn't get these undone and my fingers are cold, I'm just gonna ditch the uh, polarizer for now and just work with the ND filter. As you can see, you know, the sun is, is not shining here, um, so there's not a whole lot of reflection on the water anyway, and the water's moving pretty fast, so um, it, that doesn't really matter. The polarizer has some um, light blocking capability, which does help you through, slow the shutter down a little bit, but really uh, the ND filters are fine for that. So I tried the three-stop ND filter and that was fine, but I wanted to slow it down a little more, so I went to the six-stop ND filter and I kind of like that. Right now I'm going to start to explore, see if I can get some other angles in there, see what we get with the 24-70 lens. So now I'm just looking for some foreground elements, you know, there's all these really nice ice um, formations in front of the waterfalls, and so I'm looking for some leading lines to go up to the waterfalls. got my 6-stop ND filter on, my uh, 24 to 70 lens, and um, I'm just focusing in on some more intimate aspects of this uh, small waterfall. I just had it in the truck, which was not smart. So I think that was pretty successful. This is just to remind you that, you know, sometimes you can stay local and get some pretty great shots. Um, so thank you for tuning in. If you liked this tutorial, um, give me a like below and a subscribe. Please uh, shoot me some questions if you have any, or if there's anything else you'd like me to start giving tutorials on because I'd like to do more of these. Um, I also have a guide to waterfall, waterfall photography on the Improve Photography website if you go to improvephotography.com. And uh, please uh, follow me on Instagram, I'm at Brenda Petrella. And I'll see you guys next time.